I've got one sheet of foam board, a handful of basic electronics, and 30 minutes on the clock. So we're gonna see if we can build an RC airplane that might actually take flight or crash trying. The truth is this thing's made from basic materials, no fancy airfoil, and the build is about as beginner as it gets. Did I mention that I don't have a plan and I'm just making things up as I go? It might be too heavy, too flimsy, or just plain unbalanced. But if it works, it proves that anyone can get started flying RC airplanes without spending a fortune. So stick around and see if this $1 airframe actually takes flight or crashes trying. Let's get into it. Okay, so we've got one sheet of foam board here. So let's uh, get some measurements going here. Here's the plan. So we're gonna do an inch fuselage. So one inch here, we're gonna do a 3 16 of an inch for the foam. And we're gonna go one inch, 3 16 for the foam. And then we're gonna go one inch. We're gonna copy that onto the other side so that'll fold there, that'll fold there. That should be good. So I'm just using Dollar Tree foam board here from, from Dollar Tree or from Dollar General, either works. It's about 3 16 inch thick. And what it is is that it's foam with paper on both sides of it. So it gives its flight weight from the foam and it gives us its strength from the paper. So the C channels here that I'm making are very good for folding this foam board. And it's just a great way to, I guess, fold it together and glue it and make like nice, nice joints. Instead of cleanly cutting them and folding it nine degrees, this leaves the paper. It's probably a little bit slower, um, but this leaves the paper and makes a much nicer looking and cleaner, much stronger joint. And if you didn't cut through enough, you can always drag the knife on the back side. And it just knocks down the foam nicely. Now with an extra hot glue stick in hand, we can add glue into this channel. And you could probably start and stop like a quarter inch from the end to help it to not ooze out so much. Um, so we're gonna use the table as our friend here. We're gonna push against the table. We're gonna hold it in place for probably 30 seconds. Got all of this foam left, we can move on to our wing, but we're gonna need some for our rudder and our elevator. These sheets of foam board that I'm using here is 20 inches by 30 inches. So uh, if you find something similar where you are, um, or Dollar Tree foam board, Dollar General, Dollar Tree. So let's move on building our wing. I think we're gonna make our wing about seven inches. So now what we're gonna do here to make our um, wing our airfoil is we're going to measure, so from the leading edge here, we're gonna measure back an inch and a half and two and a half inches. So I'm only gonna go through one side of the paper. So now I'm gonna close up my knife here. You can do this with a barbecue skewer or whatever you want. And I'm just gonna widen this hole a little bit. Okay. Now what that's gonna do is that's gonna create room for it to make a curve here and that's gonna be our airfoil. So now we're going to put some glue in this to shape it up, clean up some of that glue. There's no reason to have extra glue here. It's just gonna add weight. It's a pretty weight, lightweight plane here. So um, as you can see there, yeah, that looks like a half decent airfoil. So now the one thing that we need to add here is dihedral. So dihedral is gonna make our plane stabilize. So when I make a bank, when I bank left, it's gonna automatically level out the plane. And I'm gonna make like a 16th of an inch channel here. We're gonna knock out that piece, piece of material. And we're just gonna give it like a couple of degrees. We don't need a lot. So we're gonna fill cavity with glue. We're gonna bend it up just a couple of degrees. You can probably just shove your knife under there just to give that a little bit of dihedral. It also would be a good idea to add a little piece of tape here. Let's set our wing aside and let's grab our rest of our foam. So for this small of an airplane, we really don't need a super big elevator and rudder. We could probably just, uh, let's measure this out for you. It goes six inches. This is gonna be our elevator. Now let's see if we can get some shape and design onto this. A little bit of a rounded. This is probably not smart because this is supposed to be quick and dirty, but I'm gonna go a little bit fancy here. Go for a rounded edge and 
let's measure in about an inch and a half for our vertical or horizontal stabilizer. So let's measure that inch and a half all the way across here. This is about nine and a half by six. Okay, that's definitely not anything pretty, but it gives our, our tail a little shape here. So let's cut that out real quick. And the, the way to really do this would be to cut out a piece of paper with a template or print out a template to make this nice even curve here because that is nowhere near even. So let's get back to what we were doing here. Let's make a line all the way across there and we're gonna cut a 45 degree bevel in this and that's gonna create the hinge. So now I am going to cut our vertical stabilizer and it needs to be about the same width as our horizontal stabilizer. Let's hurry it up here, time is ticking. We'll make another six inch piece here. Okay, cut that all the way across. So now let's do a little design here as well. Curve it in. Heck, that looks like something, I don't know. Now there's that, and we're gonna make our, we're gonna measure back an inch and a half, and that's gonna be our vertical stabilizer. I'm trying to get the square here. Okay, so let's break this open. It's at our 45 degree bevel. Okay, that's looking good there. Now let's get this glued up. I'm gonna draw a line here so we can try to get this stabilizer about center. Try to get that centered on there as best we can. Now we want these two lines here to line up. You can see it better over here. We want these two lines to line up just so, just so it works out well. Um, let's add some glue. Now let's marry these two together here. We're gonna flip it over like this. So this is gonna be our top. So that's just gonna go, but we're just gonna glue it on top and call it good, okay? Great. You guys on board with me? Great. Now we gotta be very careful the weight that we put back here because this uh, tail, every tiny bit of weight we put up there, we get a counterbalance with the weight up front. So we gotta be careful that we don't put way too much weight on the back here. We gotta get this plane done here. Let's add some servos here real quick. Get our pliers out here. So we wanna do a Z-bend on our little wire here. So basically that, and that is a Z. We can then take our control horns, which are these, which I 3D printed. You can buy them or you can make them out of some plywood you have laying around, either works. Um, this side's much easier, this side's much harder. So we're gonna pull on this side. See if we can add our wire. I have to make this hole just a teeny bit bigger. So that's gonna be good there. We're gonna make our servos go up as far as we can. I'm gonna cut this about in half. So we're gonna do the same on the other side. I'm gonna cut down this control horn that I've got. Put a little cut into our foam. Test fit our control horn. And you wanna get it as close to that hinge line as you can. See the curve on the control horn? You want it to get close to that hinge line. So we're gonna do the same thing here. We're gonna add our Z bend. So now we're gonna add some glue. We're gonna put our control horn in there. So now both of those are prepped and ready to go. So I cut out a little square there. I'm gonna take and I'm gonna glue the control horns together. You really wanna pick this stuff off because the glue doesn't stick to it well, but we're not going to because we're running out of time and I just put that on the wrong side. So we're gonna take that and we're gonna run our wires down through it. And we're just gonna squish our servos in there. Let's flip this around, get our control horns a little bit closer. Let's add our glue to both sides here and a little bit to the top. Press that in place. Okay, so let's add our Z bends here to our, we're gonna bend that down, hold the Z, bend that back. And I'm actually gonna turn this into a modified Z bend by turning it 90 degrees so that I can get it into our control horn here. Make this hole a little bit bigger. So the same thing on the other side. Okay, bend that down, bend that up, cut it shorter. Okay, so now we've got a Z-bend here and then we can put it down in place where it goes. Great. Okay, so now our linkages are hooked up. Get the motor here glued on the front. I'm gonna cut a little notch in the front here. 
we're gonna put it glue here, here, and here. Put our motor in place. We're gonna motor mount it to the front there. Let's get our wing glued on before we run out of time here. So we need to figure out center of gravity on this. It's at our battery. We're about right there for center of gravity. Center of gravity in the wing needs to be about here. So let's uh, say about our third back, glue our wing on, try to get it somewhat 90 degrees. That looks pretty darn good to me. Let's get our electronics here wired up. Plug in our elevator and our rudder here. Plug in our wires for our motor. Plug this into the battery. Alrighty, so I think that's our, about our time. You can see our center of gravity, which is very important to check to make sure our plane will actually fly. It's about right here. You wanna be about a third back from the leading edge of your wing. So make sure you check that before you fly and uh, make sure your tail, make sure your tail is going the right direction here. Alrighty, so that's the correct direction. Left should be going left. Left on your stick, pull back. That should be what it, you should be looking for. So make sure that is correct. Make sure your center of gravity is correct. And let's go out and see if we can fly it. So we got a new motor, much more thrust. So let's uh, try this one more time. Oh yeah, there we go. Gorgeous. Yeah. It's like it. Yeah. not turning to the right like whatsoever. And this thing flies great. Like fantastic for a simple little trainer like this. This thing flies amazing. One dollar sheet of foam. Maybe like $100 in electronics. Very cheap, very easy to get into. If you guys are on the fence, I would totally say go for it. And at least like go to Dollar General, buy a sheet of foam, build the plane, and then if you decide, yeah, worth, I'll spend the money on the electronics, then do it. Cause I think you'll have so much fun building. I enjoy building so much. And like just going online and buying a $200 plane I feel like it's kind of boring to be honest. Um, I really enjoy the process of building, the process of problem solving and getting it to fly and, you know, failing and crashing. It's, it's just a really fun time for me, so. But this plane did, is doing incredible. This is just like this little tiny trainer. Do you think we can make it do a loop? We'll see here. Oh yeah, oh yeah. It's a quite large, it's a tiny little motor, but it's quite large for how big, this, how light this thing is. This thing is awesome. Like super acrobatic. Super nimble. If it had ailerons, it would be like incredible. So if you want to see that in the future, uh, please let me know in the comments. Or maybe I'll make a little YouTube short um, putting the ailerons on it. So if you guys like this video, please uh, leave a like and check out some more of my other videos. See you in the next one. Adios.